wan ka jon go ber ge bin gi lu dux ba wan pe gi lu dux ka gen lu gen gi bin gi dux gi ba ci ka dux gi ni ko ben ka ñuen ko dan jo wacil dan ka tayar dan bu a tayar wacil wa gwada gwada kuma With the return and resettlement almost complete, the situation still remains fragile in the post-conflict northern Uganda. After the two decades of armed conflict that destroyed lives and properties, the level and causes of violence and insecurity within the former internally displaced people of northern Uganda has been a subject of changing dynamics. This period, which can be best described as transition, is a time that dates from camp life during the war to the period of return to the former homestead. Though the region once depended entirely on handouts from humanitarian organizations, it has lately seen a drastic boost in agriculture. This then puts land as a major source of conflicts in the region and majorly centered on land tenure and usage. Land is the only resource left. Everywhere you go, you ask, talk about land, they say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't tempt about the only resource that we have now. For land, I'm ready to die, I'm ready to shed blood. SACS, which stands for Advisory Consortium on Conflict Sensitivity, is a coalition of three organizations. These are Refugee Law Project, Safer Worlds and International Alert that is funded by DFID to be able to identify and advise on conflict indices during the post-conflict reconstruction of Northern Uganda. DFID is a Department for International Development and that is uh, the founder of the project under which this research has been conducted. We look at uh, the post-conflict recovery and uh, the PRDP program that can easily inform interventions and policy formulations. Through the Research and Advocacy Department of the Refugee Law Project, a team set out to carry a field research from the 28th of July to the 5th of August 2011 in Lakanga Amuru district. Uh, basically, this is an ongoing research that we are doing um, in Amuru district to engage the different stakeholders to find out issues relating to resource-based conflict, which in this case is land. The initiative of carrying out inquiries and investigation to understand the core problem behind the current wave of land conflict that is infecting the northern region is a core role of the Refugee Law Project in the ACCS coalition. The area registers the highest number of fierce clashes and bloodsheds among returned IDPs in the whole of Acholi and Lango subregion. In eight days, a team of five researchers conducted 15 interviews, nine focus group discussions held, one-on-one -on -one discussions with individual community members and eight key informants, which included the youth, local council leaders, traditional and religious leaders, district leaders, a parliamentarian and a state minister. While the bulk of existing land disputes can be attributed to unplanned return, greed, manipulation and illegal encroachment, the genesis of confusion around land boundaries is attributed to the prolonged period of absentia while living in the camps. A confusing element here that is uh, tracing who has lived where when this has made issues more complicated. To me I'm seeing we are sitting on a time bomb. And we need to detonate that time bomb in time before it explodes. We need to tell people it is not only land that is our only resource. 
The primary players in these conflicts are said to be those in authority, power and have influence leaving the common man desperate and confused as to where to turn to. It is as a result of such confusion that today we see the current escalating levels of violence, clashes and forceful evictions and the growing militancy in handling land issues. The land in Amor district has been a major, major problem. Uh, which with the police, we have really fought very hard. Sometimes they use spears, they use arrows and a bow. Sometimes when we are going to approach them, they be also hard for us. We think that are you coming back or not come back? But we almost we manage. Thing I'm any, I'm not aware. I'm not going to pee again. I'm not going to be no can. I'm not going to wear a mask. Look, thing I'm not going to get a gun. I'm not going to get a gun. You are not going to be taken care of again. Again, <laughs> Highlights of the research confirmed tension that needs urgent attention before the situation gets out of control. Much as the research is ongoing, preliminary findings at this stage point fingers to numerous actors and players including politicians, local leaders, business individuals and government. There are locals who have their interests, there are politicians who are fueling this conflict in one way or another within the locals. There are people who have come in and sold the land behind, at the, behind the backs of others. But they are destroying the houses around this place. If you, you go out you will see. Hmm? They are destroying very near here, which is influencing our, our children here, homeless. That's why we are very annoyed. And we promise that if they continue doing that thing, we are going to hunt our life to them. They should shut us all down so that we can be killed for our original homeland, our fatherland. The magistrates really frustrate the people down here and so they resolve, they take the law into their hands as when you see them, they, they pick up um, spears and, and, and holes and pangas. The way forward is let the court, oh magistrate court, those who are under the court, come on the ground where there is where a conflict is. Let them go and listen, ask opinion from the community, the neighbor who are around there. Yeah. Then they go and they will go and make a proper Judgment. Because now people are moving, case is a jam, case is a jam. Somebody give up, say, ah, we have already moved enough, I'm not going back. Yeah. It's better going to fight. But let the magistrates who are handling land cases come on the ground. Yeah. Call them, is it the locusts? 
the lockers. Then they come to the floor. I may be perceived um, in an awkward way to say that we will see anarchy in this region, but definitely if bloodshed is going on now, with even the little dialogue that is there, and if we isolate dialogue from it, definitely you're going to see worse than that. Ownership, accessibility and control formed key conflict points. I think the best way to have this conflict resolved, to my, first of all, we need our people to understand the land tenure system. You know, this tenure system in its face has caused a number of problems. When we say this land is customary, people believe that whether your father has been on transit, he has lived there for three days and has transited and settled somewhere where he passed for the three days, the land is still yours. That is the problem. Though the team managed to successfully visit conflict areas over Pur and Lakang in Amuru district, the most visible challenge remains the infrastructure in the area making it hard to move from one area to another.